Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. As a special gift to every viewer on YouTube, there is a link in the description to apply for a free breakthrough trading strategy session with myself. What does that mean? Alex created a free trading course for beginners and at the end of it, we will be selecting a few non-members to get on the phone with myself, Tosh, T Bradley 90 to help with your trading. Click the link in the bio, watch the video and apply today. Now, while today is just a preview of the full length video, if you want to watch the full length or any of our exclusive content, then become a member of MIC. What I'm going to go over today is can be applied to longs too, but um, it most, most notably, this is a short selling small cap strategy that I like to, to use. And anyway, so let's get to it. So we're going to talk about key traders. I honestly didn't do the only trade I have, I made all week was today on CPRM. So I'm going to go over it, but like, and I count my start of the week because I do my webinars on Thursday. I start my, my week like on Friday and it was just a slow week for me, you know, but like I didn't, I didn't want to force trades just to go over them here. I always feel that pressure that I want to force some trades to make sure that I have stuff to go over here. But like, man, I mean, it's just not my style. Like I'm, I'm more of a, like Tosh said today, a two to three trades a week kind of guy that's all i need i don't need to just keep going like I, I that's when i lose money so anyway um we're gonna go over market sentiment um trader topics um trader topics slash fallacies that i like to inc include in there too sometimes um this week we're going to go over strategy boards a uh, strategy that i want to go over and we're going to end it with q a so if you guys have any questions um if you guys have any questions, feel free. You can. I'm on, at the end of the stream. I'm going to go over all of the all of the Q and all of the questions that are in here, and I'm going to go over them. I'm going to go over them one by one. So if you have a question um, that's pertaining to what I'm talking about at the time, you can post it. And like, if I if I happen to see, it, I'll go over it. If not, I'll get to it at the end. Spam. What's up, buddy? All right. So okay. So CTRM, CTRM for me was the first resistance short. And I kind of originally, when I first, when this first came up, it was just kind of a trade where, can everybody hear me? Um, it was, it was, I realized this was over there. CTRM was a trade where um, the, the daily line of five was pretty prevalent, right? So I felt like that was kind of what everybody was watching um, was the $5 line. And that's essentially, I wanted to treat this as the first resistance short. And this is a little bit of what I'm, I'm going to get into the specifics of this kind of um, mentality at the end of the webinar. But I basically covered this like a piker, but I was okay with that because for me, it was still front side and I was going for the front side cover when it ultimately failed here. So a quick interjection on process, and I didn't want to go over this, right? The following the process is not meant to maximize your profit on any given day. It's supposed to increase profits and consistency in the long run, but its goal is not to ensure gains. Like you, you don't have a process to, um, the, the goal of the process is not to create gains, right? That's not a process's job is to make sure that you make money, right? That's, there's one part of the process that's supposed to ensure that, and that's the, the, the profit taking part of the process. But the process as a whole, its job is to mitigate risk and to keep you in the game. That's, it's, that's the only job of a process, right? Is to not blow up, right? To keep your mind healthy for tomorrow because you don't wanna miss out on an opportunity because you're so hung over on your, tra on your missed trade or messed up trade or loss from yesterday, right? Your process is designed to keep you following your rules, which will keep your mind uh, sane. It will keep you in the game long-term because one thing that for most traders, will develop over time is you will get an experience edge the longer you're able to stay in the game. But if you don't follow your rules in the beginning, I mean, you're gone in the first two years. Like the people that I see on Twitter, I can't tell you how many traders are not on Twitter today that were on Twitter when I first started. So, they're gone. so today, this, uh, this week's market sentiment was significantly slower than the last couple of weeks, but it's not as nearly as bad as in the summer. We're still getting a couple plays every single week. I happen to miss them this week, but or did, did, they weren't my plays. I know a couple other people got trades. Um, but yeah, the main, the main like leaders this week like that, that stayed positive were EDSA, which was today, LCI, which was all last week, and ABO, ABEO, which was uh, like I think two days ago. 
But everything else is kind of, everything that popped up kind of faded. And if you guys have been watching these webinars long enough, you guys will notice that there's always more red tickers than green tickers, right? But the, but the green tickers are always so much stronger than the red tickers. So this is actually a good representation of how small caps work. And this is kind of what I'm going to be going over. But this is a good example of how small caps work. It's like with shorting, you're going to win most of the time, but you're going to lose big. Right, you're gonna lose big on these three names, but you're gonna win on all of these names, right? If you're only short. And if you're only long, you're going to win on these and lose on all of these. So like just just thinking about it, like if you're a longer, you almost wanna be you almost have to have patience to be a longer, right? You need patience to be able to sit through and hold for larger moves because you know that larger moves are possible. And if you're a short seller, you just by looking at this market participant, like what's red and what's green every single week, it should kind of give you a clue that you're going to win most of your trades, but there's the one couple exceptions that you have to watch out for. And depending on whether you're a long or short bias trader, you can make money being both, right? But you have to formulate your process in a way to where it adheres to the style of what you're trading. Like if you're a long trader, you want to be gearing, you know, in my opinion, when I form my long process, I try to gear it towards taking full advantage of the good risk rewards of my trades. And when I'm shorting, I'm trying to take full advantage of the probability side of my trades. That's why I'm always so conservative with my, my covers on shorts, right? But my long trades are always so much bigger, right? That's just, that's just what I try to strive for because that's the innate advantages I feel in longs versus shorts that I want to capitalize on. And if you just look at the market participant, it's always a small amount of green, and a large amount of red. That's just always the way it works. Um, and I still think we're right here. Like we were here last week. I, I still think this week and last week were kind of the same. I do think we're gonna be like, I think CTRM was a little bit of a hint today um, that of what might be to come next week or the day before that it might transition more from a, a, a longs can be free to buy to where a shorts can feel a little bit more confident in their shorts and things might gap and crap a little bit more often. That's just kind of the direction I see next week. OSN, I counted last week, Oleg. But um, yeah, OSN was good, but I counted that last week. Um, my week is technically, I guess, for me starting Friday to this Thursday because I don't want to double count content. Um, but yeah, OSN, OSN was good, yeah. Um, but yeah, like back to what I said, I do think that we are um, – shifting into maybe like next week or so it might like shorts might have their turn right longs had their turn the last couple of weeks i think shorts are going to have their term their turn in the next week so one quick thing i want to get over before i get into the meat of the the presentation is why mixing lines is really bad like i, I think i went over this yesterday or this morning it was one of two but it was something i wanted to go over more why mixing lines is really bad. And Joe and I have gone, um, touched on this in another webinar. But um, it's basically, the reason why it's bad is because you're essentially forcing two trades in one. And what I mean by that is, think about any trade you ever take. There is always a reason why you're in. And the reason why you're in is because if you're buying it, you think it's going to go to X from, you know, it's going to go to Y from X, right? The exit is the reason why you're in because you think it's going to be higher in the future or lower in the future if it's a short, right? Um, the exit is always going to define the entry, right? There's always like, you know, if you're, if you, if you want to sell at $10 and a stock is at, you know, $7 tanking to $5, you don't need to be the guy that buys it at $5 and sells at $10, right? Because what's likely going to happen is if it goes to $4, you're going to stop out of the trade. It's going to go to ten dollars, and you're going to, you know, be shy about re-entering because you just lost. But even though it went to ten, you're still right. You see how that works? Um, so, it de depending on where you want to sell or cover, that almost tells you what's the most, where it makes the most sense to enter to provide the least amount of stress on yourself, right? But also, so because of that factor, if you're trying to combine, um, like, uh, one exit with two different entries. Very rarely does that happen, right? Like if, if a stock is washing out of the open and your exit that defined your buy right at the open is you thought it was going to gap and go or something. You thought it was going to gap and just ignite up and, you know, go from seven to 
Well, if it starts tanking to five and you say, well, no, that's good. That's a washout long trade. I'm going to buy that too. What you have to consider is after it's washed out, is your goal of 10 really feasible? And very rarely is that kind of going to happen, right? And then the, the, the question then presents itself, well, if it is going to go to 10, you can wait for it to get back up to seven before you enter and risk the fact that one, you might be wrong and it might just go back to, to three. You risk that, you know, you're taking that risk off of the table and you're probably going to like knowing that, you know, like unless your timing is spot on, which let's be honest, how often is your timing perfectly on? You can probably get your same average on, on the after it's already bottom. Right. So just taking those two factors into consideration. So this is what I want to talk about. Um, this is the strategy I use to get um, that has led me the most consistency when it comes to shorting and longing, but sh especially short selling in general, short selling small caps. I'm going to call it the powerful pair. And the, po the powerful pair is the, I the basic part of the strategy is that you need to start late and you need to start slow this is the most consistent way i've found to short selling small caps right and so i'm going to go into it uh, most traders are going to flock to one and you're probably going to find that you do one of these in your trading but not both and um like and so like you'll try one of them and it, it will kind of work, but not consistently. And then what you'll do is you'll try the other one and it will kind of work, but not consistently. And you'll never, ever try both, right? You'll never, ever start late and start slow. And the reason why no one ever does both is because they're greedy. I mean, I, I am like, it took me a while to figure this out too. Like it's because traders are greedy. And if you remember what I talked about in last webinar, Greed and the inability to be grateful for gains is, in my opinion, the one reason why traders uh, fail is because they can't, you know, they can't mentally win in their brain and they just go down this down slope. This is, this is what we talked about in the last webinar. It's a really, it, it, was, it was, I think, one of my favorites. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you go see that one. But um, yeah, not being grateful for your gains, right? Because you always want more, right? So most people either start late or start slow but never both. So, and in my experience in backtesting, one never cuts the juice, right? You're, you know, it's either one, you're always going to win small, win small, win small, and then like lose big. And the other one is you're just, you're going to get restless and never trade and then just make an emotionally impatient bad decision. Individually, they can work, but the, your odds are lower if you're not exceptionally um, anal about being up uh, like particular and selective with your trades. So I'm going to define them here, right? So starting late. What I mean by starting late is starting after everybody else, right? And I mean starting, like making sure that you start after everybody else. Meaning like if, if you have a line here, right? If, you, if there's a line here at eight, you know people think that it's not going to get there and people are basically shorting, you know, before six, they're shorting before, you know, they're shorting at five, they're shorting at six, they're shorting at seven, right? Um, th but there's a clear line here at eight, and this is the most outer line, right? It's like 775 or eight, right? Uh, starting late to me means starting at the outer lines, right? Not scaling into the outer lines, which is what most people do because every, nobody wants to be, these are the people who start scaling before the outer lines. Um, are the people who um, are, have FOMO and they don't want to risk missing the move. They don't want to risk missing whatever move is out there currently. They, they, they feel like if it goes down without them, they're going to lose money. If they're losing opportunity. They're going to feel really bad if they miss it, right? So most will start in on inner and build into outer. And this, this, will, this has some credence. Like this will work a lot of the times, right? Um, but what tends to happen is... Um, they, people will start at inner lines and build into outer lines. And when you get to the outer lines, you're nervous, right? And so I want to define starting slow. So starting slow means at these outer lines, not only are you starting late, but you are starting slow, meaning 
at the outer lines, you're using a starter. Do you ever change, remove your entries for the fantasy or based on price action? Uh, as a general rule, no. It, but if it's something really crazy, you bet your ass. Like, like something like OPGN, like if I had an idea, like it depends. If the price action, from the time I set the order there, if the price action is trading a certain way, but all of a sudden it starts to trade a different way, like the ass, all of a sudden it starts to get really thin, really choppy, or really, really, re or it starts halting or really starts getting exponential, I might consider being like, you know what, F this trade. I, I, I maybe not, I might not move it. I might, I'm more likely to just be like F this trade, right? It, it's, I'm not rarely, I'm rarely going to change the order and say like, oh, well, maybe a little bit higher because now that's just me being afraid. That's not me trusting my lines and that's not me. And that's me trying to be afraid. And if you move the order, now you're going to regret it. If it goes to that order, stops and comes down, it's much better to just have the order in there and stop out. Um, if you're not wrong, that'll save your sanity. You'll be like, okay, the trade didn't work, but I pre-planned the risk and it, and it worked out or it didn't. When more likely than not, I'm just going to be like, you know what? I don't like this anymore. Like I, I am no longer, in, this is not me. I'm not going to tackle this. This has gotten like maybe in the beginning of the day, it was trading on lightish volume and you're like, Oh, let me put the fantasy order pop up there. I'll come down. You know, after, you know, and like, but since then it slammed really hard and then like, and like all this volume traded, then it comes back up. Now that wasn't in the original cards, right? It wasn't supposed to already tank and then come back up to my line on some renewed strength, right? That, you know, like that might change my thesis a little bit, but as a general rule, I'm not changing the order because that just, you're normally just changing it in fear. And what's to stop you from changing it on like your second, like if you'll change it the first time, why won't you change it the second time? It's just fear that's making you change it. And if you're afraid now, what makes you won't be afraid later? You got to trust yourself a little bit, right? I'll only remove the order if I feel my thesis is invalid anymore. Good question. Very good question. I may have missed this, but do you add after the trade starts working? And if you do, where do you add? So I didn't go over that in this webinar, but I have in others. So my rule on ads is I only like to add when I can lower my risk. Or, 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 or like, so like, like I only add if I can lower. So let's say I was short here. Let's say I, I, I shorted into EDSA, right, here at 725, and my risk is 8, right? This is now my risk. Now, when it tanks over here, I might consider an add over here, but I'm only going to add if I feel comfortable moving my risk down to 740. So that's my general rule of thumb is I only add when I can, I only add when I can feel comfortable moving my risk down, not moving my risk down because I added, they're, they're, you know, make sure that they don't flip. Like you're moving your risk down because you added. Like only when there's like a, a, a level that kind of makes sense to move your risk down, that's when I like to add. Another rule of thumb is if I wasn't in the stock and I wanted to get in, where might I get in and risk a certain level? And it's the same thought process, right? That's now the risk of that trade. So essentially I only add when I'm trading two trades at once. Like I still have this trade risking this trade, but now I have this trade risking here, but I'm also just moving this risk up to here because I think this will invalidate both pieces. Of the so um, I only add when I can lower risk. And um, this also works in the, um, when, I, when I talk about an evolved risk, like sometimes, and it's, it's a more, advanced technique is when like you always have an ultimate stop but i don't often want to take my ultimate stop i will but i'm hoping it doesn't come to that and i'm typically really small in you know if that so that if that does happen I, i'm not you know i'm not going to be hating myself tomorrow but when i have an ultimate stop but you know, i know i want to be in because i feel like this action is not sustainable i have an ultimate stop of course 
but I'm waiting for some price. I'm waiting for the action to evolve to where I feel comfortable um, adding some size and using that the risk. Now I have identified the risk or essentially moved the risk down from the ultimate to now my preferred stock I'm going to use. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.